Hello, you guys. Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. I'm Crystal Crawford. And um, I'm in Georgia this week. And for what might be many more moons, um, I met my friend Stephanie Richardson's house. We may be becoming roommates for an indefinite amount of time. And um, this week's topic is, I called it Explode or Die. Now, this topic came about as a brief conversation. Hi, Saskia. Explode or Die, baby. So this, this topic su- subject came up with um, my friend Clementine Mitchell. Hi, Celine. Um, who does my weekly graphics and composes the email. And hi. Hi, Maxie. Um, she's going through the thing, the stuff, the thing. And then I had another friend of mine yesterday that I was messaging. Hi, Kathy. Hi, guys. Um, That was like just stuff coming, like just all this energy coming up. And um, so I wanted to, uh, I wanted to riff in and around this thing. And in the process of doing so, I'm probably going to end up telling you about something that I haven't yet told the world, which is that I'm starting a church. Hi, Maria. Okay, so this explode or die topic is fun for me. I uh, the first time this came up for me, I was in an um, SOP class. Hi, Charlene, and it was one of the first times that um, I had so much energy available to me in my body as excitement and enthusiasm and as aliveness. It was one of the first times, and I that I kind of had that. And um, I went into this, this Symphony of Possibilities class with Dane, right? And the way you talk to Dane in a big class like that is you get on the microphone. And I planted myself. It was the early morning. I planted myself right at the microphone. And um, I, there was, I don't know what my question was. I think it was more just like, oh, my God, Dane. I didn't know that I could feel so alive. Hi, Angela. Hi, Cindy. I didn't know I could feel so alive. Hi, Kirsten. And um, I was like, I just, I just like, I just... I think I was sitting at the microphone going like, oh my God. And he's like, go baby, go, go baby, go, go baby, go. And that's all he said. And I spent the rest of that class and, and in the Symphony of Possibilities class, like you're working on each other and you're like moving energy and changing energies. And like, so, you know, in the class itself, you, it's, it's kind of easy, right? You just get into the session and you're like going, you're like, you're creating whatever. You don't care. Hi, Dorothy. Um, but then you go home. And I say, but then you go home because that's what it's like for a lot of us. Um, after a lot of access classes or after being at these big access classes or going through a lot of clearings, like then you go home, then you're in your regular everyday life. And then you're like, well now it's like boner down, right? Like it's like you have all this flirting and all this thing. And then you go home and you're like, Mer. and, uh, hi Cynthia, hi John. Um, so that was kind of my first bout with that. And since then, that was probably about three years ago, to four years ago, I have had multiple times where I just like something changes so dynamically that I literally feel like I'm going to explode. And the reason I called it explode or die is because at some point there is so much energy. You really do kind of have to choose something else or just fall into the ground. <laughs> That's how it feels. That's kind of literally what it is. And and so I wanted to give you some tools or I don't I don't know what they're gonna be yet, but I wanna talk about this today as a possibility, as a creative possibility instead of as the thing that, you know, might make you feel crazy or just send you into trauma and drama or a place where you go and choose angst instead of creation. Because every single moment of your life, it doesn't matter what it is, including this moment where you're like, oh, right? That ache of dissatisfaction, that awareness of all the creative energies, that awareness of the future that you actually desire that you can't articulate or put into words gets to either be a limitation or it can be a creative space. Now, I, uh, over the week, this, this past, hi, Sudita, Sudita, beautiful. Yeah. So this week I've been, I, I've been down in Georgia here with my friend Stephanie for, um, I don't even know now, a week, week and a half. And every single time that she and I hang out, like I can't even articulate how much gets created. And one of the questions that I'm so, I'm just so grateful that I have friends like this that ask me shit that I would never ask myself. Hi, Linda. Um, One of the things she asked me, I don't even know, a couple months ago was like, if you could create anything just for the fun of it, 
what would it be? Because I create a lot of stuff around, you know, I do a lot of access classes. I do a lot of telecalls. I do a lot of programs. I do a lot of coaching stuff. I do all that stuff right now is easy for me, right? Like it's not hard. I know how to do it. I can whip it out. Hi, Tara. Um, so, so all of us get to that place, no matter what you do, all of us get to that place where it's like, okay, so this, this thing that was challenging to me, right? Dorothy, hi, Mary Nella. It's no longer challenging to me. Like now, I mean, this may be hard for other people, but now it's kind of boring for me. Like I know how to do it. I've done it before. And this is the thing about humanoid reality is that you get bored easily. And some of us get bored more quickly than others of us. And that's not wrong. That's just different, right? So I get bored really, really fast. So now I know how to do an online business. I know how to do a show. This is, this is episode 51, y'all. I'm, I'm heading into a year of doing this every week, right? When I first started, I didn't know if I could do this. I didn't know if I could pull up a topic every week, but guess what? Hi, John. I can. So this is what you discover about yourself as you start new stuff is that you can. And then a lot of you, if you, you know, you can be a mom, you know, you can do this, you know, you can do this, you know, you can do that, right? So it gets to this point where as we're asking for more, as we're pulling more energies into our world without any words, because guess what? Our first language is energy. Um, guess what we have available to us? More of energy to do what with? any fucking thing that we want. So Stephanie asked me this question. She's like, if you could create anything just for the fun of it, what would it be? And the two things I said were stand-up comedy and pottery <laughs> just because I could, right? So that day, and I think I've sort of mentioned this already, but that day I started writing stand-up comedy. So I actually have signed up for a class with Katie Rubin that starts May 30th, which is in two days, uh, seven weeks with Katie to start fleshing out my stand-up show. Now, I don't know how to do this. I've never done it before. Guess what's really, really exciting and tapping into that well of uh, energy, right? That's one of the things, okay? I haven't yet taken any steps on the pottery. Um, but last week, as I was hanging out with Stephanie, a third thing came up. And um, I can, I have not, so for any of you guys that know my story, um, you know that I grew up really religious um, had several iterations of religion, and then I ended up going to Bible school when I was 25, and I got my degree in theology. And I spent three years in a really fucking kick-ass Bible school with a pastor who was this, you know, ex-draggy, ex high karinka high owner, um, you know, ex-rock and roller, just cool guy. And, um, <laughs> yeah, Maria. So, Three years of like full on, I'm literally talking about, I got up at 5.30 in the morning, um, we had chapel in the morning, then we had school till 12, I had a quick lunch, then I went to my first job, then I had a quick nap, then I went to my second job, and then I had activities in the evening and activities on the weekend. It was like seven days a week, like 18 hour days, full on hypernola, um, with training, you know, with reading the Bible, with learning how to create a business, with like... How do you do a service? What are all the different facets of even running a church? You know, the ushering team, the kids team, the drama team, this team, that thing. Um, what is, what's the behind the scenes of all that? What's writing a sermon? How do you do all that, right? So it was a lot of different facets of what it would actually take training on, you know, how to create a church. And then what's planting a church? Anyway, so it was like all these different facets of church stuff. So then at 27, I got married and just dropped the whole thing. Like, I just got married and went a totally different direction. I ended up opening a pizzeria. <laughs> and I was an actor for a year. I mean, so I did all kinds of other things. Well, there's been this awareness that I've had, an energetic awareness that I've had probably for billions of years, but definitely in this lifetime since I was a kid that's sort of woven its way through my life. And it showed up, you know, in the herb gardens of the conclave that we would go to when I was seven or eight. And it would show up here, and it would show up there, and it showed up in, hi, Nydia, hi, Nadia. Um, it would show up, you know, in a worship service when I had my eyes closed and the music was just pounding through my body and I was singing at the top of my lungs. It would show up then. It showed up in the energetic synthesis of being when I, when I hung out with Dane for the first time. And I just cried these tears of recognition. It wasn't, it was gratitude, but it was recognition of something that I've always known. I can't tell you what this is that I know. I can be it. I can communicate it in 18,000 different ways. I can be it right here, right now. I'm being it right now. I cannot tell you what this is. 
It's this thrumming life force energy that just fills me up every cell of my body that when I sing, when I'm, when I'm grateful, when I'm falling in love with somebody the way that you do, when I'm having a meal that just like hits every molecule, it shows up every which different way. Um, I can't tell you what this is. I know that if I don't express it, if it doesn't come out of my body though, like I'm gonna die. <laughs> you know, it's like that dramatic, right? It's like it feels like it's gonna consume you. And um, one of the things I'm really getting through being here is there's so many things. Holy fuck! One of the millions things is that energy wants to like one. It can show up any way you want it to. Two, if you have no purpose and nothing that that energy has to revolve around or be correct about it can show up any way that you want it to and three if you have no right and wrong about it it can show up any way that you want it to so let me give you an example um i'm an access consciousness certified facilitator right so that means i can do business one way right what what So now I can only create business in the way that I've seen other access consciousness facilitators create business? That means that all of my other life stuff, life choices, things that I love are just gone? I can't choose those anymore? What? Like, and that's what I really have started to see where I basically took the rest of my life, which is like 20 years in the restaurant industry and like, you know, three years of Bible school, 27 years as a Christian, um, all of my other life stuff that I came in and chose, by the way, and just went, well, pff, fuck all that. I'm an Access Consciousness Certified Facilitator now. Hi, Doreen. Hi, Catherine. What? And last week, what I started to look at was like, still deep down, I was still trying to get being a facilitator, being conscious right. I'm still trying to do that. And I, I say that a lot with everybody, which is not wrong. It's just what we do. Like, we're just trying to get this consciousness thing right and do it in the right, wow, you know, like talk about anti-conscious. <laughs> consciousness includes everything and judges nothing. And I am getting around to a point here because I know I talk about this a lot, but this, it hit me in a different way. So consciousness includes everything, judges nothing. And then I'm sitting on the couch and I'm like, hang on, there's no purpose to any of that. Like Gary says, Gary Douglas says all the time, what if the purpose of life is to have fun, right? And I think I've told you before how much that like pisses me off or <laughs> has pissed me off in the future. Because so I was like, well, what's the point then? If it's just to have fun, what's the point? Now listen, I grew up in a very purpose-driven family. Not all of you did, right? So this, is, this isn't going to read for all of you. My family was intensely purpose-driven, intensely help-driven, intensely cause-driven, intensely altruism driven intensely like I went on a Bible school Bible what did I do I went on a missions trip to China to smuggle Bibles and support the Christians in China which is super cool and like everything in my life came from this place of getting it right right like we found this religion and that was right we found that religion and that was finally right we found this religion and that was right and then when I came to access I'm like well that's right well guess what that means if something is finally right and not I don't mean true for you I mean right then you then have to figure out how, hi Doreen, hi Vanessa, every single thing that you do matches up with the right, not matches up with the energies you're aware of in the world, not matches up with the greatness of you, not matches up girl, <laughs> hang on here, I just got all excited and preacher and I threw my phone down, <laughs> that's awesome. So not matches up with any of that other stuff that's actually relevant, that's actually you being, matches up with right. So guess what gets cut off when you're trying to match up what you know with right? You! (laughs) All of your creative capacity. So I say all of that to say that when we were talking about this whole purpose thing and that whole thing of getting it right and all that... What came out of my mouth to Stephanie Richardson, which is, um, yes, Angela, I will tell that story someday. (laughs) Um, I said to her, I was like, I cannot shake 
this sense of church. I can't shake it. Every time, I was just recently in Colorado Springs, and if you live in the United States, you, I mean, it's just different in different parts of the states, but basically speaking, the United States is a pretty Christian nation. Now, I'm using that real loosely. But like Atlanta, Georgia license plates for cars say, in God we trust. Like the undercurrent of this whole nation has Christianity sort of laced through it, you know? And it's been a while since I've been here. I've been up in Canada for 12 years. So being down here has been really different. And I grew up in Colorado Springs and I was just there for a few weeks. And I would drive by, in Colorado Springs, they have these massive organizations like Focus on the Family. Like, I don't even know how many thousands of people work there, and it's known worldwide as a massive Christian organization. So these corporations that are churches and, you know, and um, I kind of forgotten about that. So we're driving by these, and I'm just, I just kept looking at the model, the business model, you know, because I'm a business person too. I'm like, God, that's brilliant. Really, like, you are... You're providing this thing that people think they need, which they do. It's like these truths with lies attached, you know, and then getting supported by the 10% tithe thing. And so I kept looking at that. So anyway, I'm sitting across from Stephanie and I'm like, I cannot shake church. I cannot shake that there's a place where people can go actually to just be able to be, you know, to hang out with each other. Because for me, that's what church was. It was like a place where... It was all kinds of things, but generally speaking, it was a place where like people could just go and just be themselves. And number one. Number two, somewhere I could go and actually express and get out of my body this massive gargantuan energy that I was aware of that came out as gratitude and praise and celebration and like, you know, it was this place where I could actually go and be that. And it was okay to be that. And there was no other place in the world where it was okay to be that, right? Like, it's not like you could go to the grocery store and just, like, belt out a tune. Nobody did that, right? So in church, it was okay to be that. Hi, Maggie. Um, and, and then this place where you could, like, learn new stuff, where maybe you were having a hard time in your life. Number four, a place where you could actually have a hard time and get support. It was all these different things that I looked around my life and I'm like, I sort of have that. I sort of don't. Like, there was something lost when I left, la- left that. So all of this stuff started just kind of rumbling back through my world. And I'm like, anyway, so sit, again, back to the story. Since so talking to Steph, and I'm like, I can't shake this. And she's like, okay, well, I want you to go downstairs, and I want you to make three videos right now. I didn't have to choose that, y'all. I could have said, <laughs> nah, <laughs> you know. But I didn't. I was like, all right. And listen, guys. My palms are sweating. I'm heading down to the basement to talk to my tripod for an undetermined amount of time to nobody in particular. My palms were sweating. My heart was beating. I was turning red. I'm like, oh my God. And so I walked downstairs. I put my phone in my tripod. I don't have any makeup on. I'm like, I'm just going to make these videos just to see what comes out of my mouth. Because I've been saying this. And here's the thing I want to look at. I've been saying, you know, church, God, I can't shake this. I talked to my friend Marnie about it. I've talked to Stephanie about it. I'm like, it won't leave me alone. I haven't done anything. I haven't actualized anything. Where is that energy going to go? Well, I mean, you know, it'll go into drinking more. It'll go into, like, angst. It'll go into trauma drama. It'll go into relationship problems. It can go anywhere. I can create anything with it. And I'm like, okay, so this time I'm going to take it down to the basement. I'm going to turn on the video camera. And I'm just going to start talking. I didn't have any topics. I didn't know what it was going to So I, do the, I turn on the video camera and I start talking. And the first one that came out was kind of rough. It was around beliefs. The second, hi Jenny, um, the second one that came out was, uh, I can't even remember now, something else, and the third one, something else. So I can't even remember what they were now, but as I was talking, it was like, it was like I was meeting me. It was like for the, it was not, it was, yeah, it was kind of like that. It was kind of like for one of the first times I was meeting me. And I realized the more I talked, the more I actually had to say about this stuff. And the more I, the more I did it, you know, it was like, it was like, I don't even know. I don't have any great examples, but it's like that first time when you start getting a car out on the road and you're like, oh, and then you keep driving. You're like, oh, you know, and then now my Mercedes has been driving all over North America. And now it's like, oh, you know, she's all lubed up. She's like smooth as butter. Right. And it was kind of like that. And I don't know where this adventure is going to take me. I don't know. I've, I've bought the domain, my5minutechurch.com. Um, I don't have anything up. I haven't shared these videos with the world yet. This is the first time I'm truly actually talking about it. 
uh, I don't know where this is going to take me. I don't know if I'm going to start a physical building. I don't know any of that. I don't have to know any of that. But for me, and this is what I want to invite you to, is I know that me committing to my life isn't going to look anything like you committing to your life. Me committing to what I know and how that's going to show up in my world isn't going to look like any other certified facilitator. It's not going to look like my sister. It's not going to look like Stephanie. It's not going to look like anybody. If I started a goddamn church, it's certainly not going to look like Rob Bell or anybody else, right? Like, it's going to look like the way it looks for me. And if truly, if truly there's no actual purpose, meaning nothing I have to match, nothing I have to ride alongside, nothing I have to reference, unless I want to, then I truly can just let it come out however it comes out. I truly can just turn it on and start talking. Why? Because none of it means anything and all of it is just for the fun of it. All of it is just because I can. If I end up starting a church and y'all end up coming, (laughs) be just because you can. Or for whatever your reasons are. Or for whatever it is. Or for whatever you feel like choosing that day. And I guess... I'm not... I think the invitation might be more energetic than it has words today, but that thing of like, what do you know? What do you just know? What would be, if you could just create, if you could choose two things to create just for the fun of it, just because you can, what would they be? Start. And my favorite saying from Gary is get to work. You know, like, and we read it again in the Home of Infinite Possibilities today. If you haven't picked up that book, I highly, highly recommend it. Get to work. Just start. You keep talking about wanting to be an artist? Go to the art store. Buy a thing. Buy some brushes. Or don't. Get some paint. Stick your hand in it and put it on the goddamn canvas. Right? Just start. Why? Because you can. Because it gives that energy somewhere to go. Because choice creates awareness. Because putting your hands in paint is fun. And that is all. Do you know what you're going to do with it yet? Do you know how you're going to monetize that? Nope. Does it matter? Nope. Would you be willing to be as undefined with yourself as you maybe invite others to be? And play with the things that you've dumped, that you've tossed out, that you haven't yet tried that you thought can't make you any money, that you've discounted in 1,800 different ways, pick those things back up and go, hmm, if I could do anything, what would I choose? And take yourself there. Drive yourself to the blacksmith and go start building swords. I, there has been more random shit come out of my mouth hanging around Stephanie Richardson than any other time in my life, and I'm so excited to just keep doing that because it creates something different. It gets me out of my... It just gets me playing exploring, adventuring into these other energies that on my own, I might not try. So who or what can you add to your life first? And what couple of things could you just invite yourself to choosing just to see, just to play, just to squish your toes in the sand, put your hands in paint, get yourself on video camera saying words that don't make any sense, um, buying domains just because it's fun, just and see what's actually possible that you haven't yet chosen go explode all over everything just because you can walk run paint potter create fucking anything and see what shows up and in the meantime i will keep you guys abreast of all the latest in the world of church see how that shows up And um, I hope you have fun with this. I hope this is a contribution. If it was, I'd love for other people to find it. And, you know, it's always weird when I say that. I always say it at the end. I'm like, share this if you liked it. Fuck it. Um, (laughs) I'm so grateful you're in the world. And I'm so grateful that you joined me live. And I'll see you all next week for the end of year one.